Hi, this is Tim from Tiger Astronomy and a happy 2019 to you. And in this video, I want to show you how I've been versioning my code. Um, if you, when you get just get started coding, you probably don't wor wor worry about versioning too much and just use the default behavior that Visual Studio has. Um, but um, when you start getting into things like NuGet packages, versioning becomes extremely critical. And um, the technique I've developed to deal with that it uh, means that I never have to set manually a code version. I basically link it to my git commit history and uh, the version falls out of that naturally and very, very easily. So that's what this video is about. And without further ado, I'll show you how I retrofit a, an old style project to use this new technique. OK, so in this uh, project, this project is called Horizon Data Interchange, and it's a little command line utility I wrote some time back with some uh, contributions from uh, from Dave Wormuth. <clears throat> and um, it, not that it's important for this, but the, the program allows you to import and export Horizon definition data from various astronomy programs and, and to, allows you to easily share that data across all your planetarium software. Um, now, as you can see from the code, this is the global assembly info file that I use in the project. And the uh, version is set here in the file using assembly attributes. And this is pretty much typical for what you see when you do file new project in Visual Studio. So, um, however, um, it turns out that most people don't do versioning this way, at least not anymore. Um, so, um, I've, I mentioned NuGet packages, and NuGet uses something called semantic versioning or semver, and that uses a, uh, this is actually a semantic version 2.0.0, and that's major version, minor version, and patch version. And in the black bar at the top, you can see examples of semantic versions. And uh, so this is highest version or most recent version to the left and oldest or uh, oldest or lowest version to the right. And this is showing actually the correct sort order for semantic versions. So um, if there's a, like 2.0.0 is fairly obvious. 2.0.0-rc.2, the dash rc means this is a pre-release version. Dash anything means a pre-release version. And those come earlier in the sort order than if that is just missing. So that's kind of counterintuitive, but that's how Semver works. So since NuGet uses Semver or something very, very close to it, um, I've decided to standardize all my versions for everything around semantic versioning. And um, I mentioned that I use Git as my version control system. And I use a system called Git flow, which is just a branching strategy. There's no magic there, but Git flow defines uh, what kind of changes you do or what, how you name your branches and when you need to change your version numbers. So I kind of combine all these techniques and I use a utility called git version, um, which basically infers the code version being built from the git commit history. It's all very, very handy. OK, so let's do this. The first thing I want to do is give a quick introduction to git version. So if we pop into the PowerShell window over here and uh, you can see I'm on my develop branch. You should always make changes in develop or a branch off develop in uh, git flow. So git version has um, consists of a command line utility and also an MS build task for integrating into your build. So the first thing I can do, um, this is just the root, the solution level of my, my the top level of my solution directory. You can just type in git version and see what git version would make of this project. Now, um, because I've released version 1.0.0 already, and now I've made changes on develop, Git version knows that 
I've created a new version here. So it's it's used major version one, minor version one, and patch version zero. So because I'm on the develop branch, it also has inferred that this is an alpha release. We could also consider it an integration test or an integration build. So it just uses alpha for that. And you can also see that this stuff here is very useful because it relates the, um, it basically extracts the git commit um, ID, this big long hash at the end. So you can build that into your assembly informational version and it identifies for any given piece of executable code exactly which commit in git it came from. So anyway, so that's what that's what the command line utility does. Now, um, if we have a look at the code again, and where is the code window? We need to look at the global assembly info file. Now, currently, you can see in here that I'm using just a default versioning method that Visual Studio gave me when I did file new project. So the first thing is I'm going to take that away. That's gone now. I never set my code version manually anymore. It will be generated dynamically at build time. And so the first thing I will do is build that code. And we can see here the build running. The little build panel you can see bottom right hand corner there is is resharper uh, a resharper build utility which basically wraps the built-in stuff in Visual Studio and just gives you a nice little visual indication of what's going on. So it does take a while to build because um, I use code contracts in this project and it's doing a static analysis of the files and that just take, does take a minute to do. So um, we may pause the video at this point and come back when it's done. Okay, here we go. So the project has built. I have a warning here, may fix that later. Um, but uh, for now, if I go back to PowerShell and run this code, now we can do that by drilling down into the, uh, no, what we want is the bin debug directory and then the executable. Now if we execute this code with no parameters it gives us a help screen and one of the things it prints out here is the version number. So as you can see that's because I took the version attributes out of the global assembly info that's all reverted to 0000. So now we need to put back some other versioning strategy which uh, sets the version of this code and that's what we'll do next. So okay we now need to add the git version task new get package to our code so i'm going to do that in here manage new get packages and let me show both windows so you can see what's going on at least so over in the new get package window i'm going to just put in git version task in the search box and there it is and we just go ahead and install that I, uh, while it's doing that, oh, we have to wait, it looks like. Okay. So we're good, that's installed. Okay, so if I rebuild that now, Okay, so that's built, and if we now run that again in PowerShell, then we can see that the, there we go. Okay, so now we have a rather interesting version number. 
So we have a version 1.1.0-alpha.1 plus branch.develop and then the SHA1 hash of, of the git commit. So that is a more useful version number, I would argue. And it's not set anywhere in the code. It is, it is now completely a consequence of the build process. So it's impossible to forget to set the version number, which is great. OK, so let's have a look at the file that we've built. If we uh, open up Windows Explorer and uh, look at the file we've generated. So it's in TA Horizon bin debug. And here we have the executable. And if we get the file properties up for that, <coughs> and go under the details tab you can see hopefully you can see that uh, we've got version 1.1.0.0 and the product version here has that big long useful version string in it so uh, and then that's the assembly informational version also has the same string in it so so there we are, that's Git version, and um, the documentation website is very, very comprehensive. There's all kinds of options, and um, you know, there's a way to do pretty much anything you want to do with it, but it works kind of sensibly by default. So, um, this is what I'm doing with all my projects now. Um, there's a, a technique where you can change the name of your output file so that it contains the version that's being built, which is uh, can be useful under certain circumstances. So that's it from me for this video. I've been Tim from Tiger Astronomy. Thank you for watching and goodbye.